Kaboye. Give Jesus a big hand as we work. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. The sound I'm hearing. Thank you, Jesus. The sound I'm hearing this morning is like sound of adults or old people. Will you make it like a young shout of Amen. By now, I expected that some youths in the house would be jumping and leaping and giving glory to God. If you are not an old man, come on. Give God a big, 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 big shout. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Will you please join me? Lift up your hand. Let's give glory to God together. What a day. What a season. What a blessing in his presence. Give God quality thanks from the depth of your heart. Thank him truly. Thank him sincerely for another Youth Alive convention that met you alive. Give him glory. Give him praise. Thank you, mighty Father, in Jesus' wonderful name we have given thanks. Amen. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you this morning for bringing us into this great convention. And not just bringing us, but you have begun to touch us, and you shall continue to touch us. Amen. Father, receive our thanks. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for all that happened at the opening last night. Thank you for using our Father to bless us. And thank you for all of your servants you've used this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the blessing. Thank you for the testimonies. Thank you for the presentations. Thank you for the ministrations. Thank you for touching us in a new way. Thank you because the theme has begun to work and it will continue to work in our lives. Amen. Truly, we are destined for dominion. Amen. And this will become a reality in our lives. Amen. And all who believe say a very loud Amen. amen. All across the globe, Father, send forth your word again. Everywhere connecting with us at Canaan land. Let everyone both on ground and online be blessed in Jesus name. Amen. Give God another big hand as you take your seat. Help me announce your neighbors right, left. You are destined for dominion. Do that with a smile. You are destined for dominion. Prophesy to somebody with authority, you are destined for dominion. In case your neighbor didn't tell you very well, you like to tell yourself, I know you will do it better right now. Clap for yourself right now. Glory to God. I thought you are shouting as well. Amen. It's my joy and privilege not only to be at this 2022 International Youth Alive Convention, but also to have the privilege to bring God's word to us, building on what we have enjoyed in the first two word sessions this morning. I do know that this word will be a plus 
to all that you have heard before in Jesus' name. Now, to thank our Father, God's servant, the Apostle of this commission, Bishop David Oedipoom, who has been used by God to create this platform to secure the future of this commission. I'm glad to let you know again this morning, you are our future. We see you building on what has been built here. Seated here this morning are people who will do far greater than we have ever done. You are not only our joy, you are our pride. And we look forward to the manifestations of great things through you beyond what we have ever seen. So we want you to grow into sonship and this will form the basis for the teaching this morning. The joy of a father is a child, but the pride of the father is a son. There are two different things. When Jesus was born, God sent an angel to announce him. He didn't go there. But when he became a son, he came to announce by himself, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. I'm happy he was born, but I am proud he has become a son. That's what we are looking forward to. We want to be proud of you. We want to hear great things that God is doing through you. And we know that it has started manifesting. And it will continue to grow. In the name of Jesus. We commend all of our youth leaders, beginning with our youth pastors, and all of the leaders from all across the regions, the states, and everywhere. We pray that God will continue to uphold every one of them in the name of Jesus. And for our host pastor here, the resident pastor, Faith Tabernacle, God bless you and all the team of pastors putting hands together to ensure that there is comfort for everyone on ground here. And all of our pastors and leaders who are coordinating in all of the stations and everywhere, the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. And from all of our churches worldwide, we all wish you the best of time in this convention. Amen. Another big hand for Jesus. As we are all aware, the theme for this convention is destined for dominion. It will not only be chorus in your mouth, it will become a testimony in your life. It will not only be a testimony in your life, you will become the testimony of that sin. The teaching of this session is pay today and play tomorrow. Amen. <laughs> pay today and play tomorrow. The reverse can be the choice of someone. Play today and pay tomorrow. But I recommend for you to choose the earlier and not the later. Focus of this teaching is on the power of discipline. Discipline. And our text is 1 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 24 to 26. Know ye not that they which run in a race, run all. Life is a race. Once you are born, you are born into a race. But one received the prize. Who will receive the prize here? I thank God for your response verbally, but practically run that you may obtain so it's a race you have to run in order to win and every man that strive it that is discipline making effort for the mastery 
is temperate, disciplined in all things, in all things, disciplined in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we, an incorruptible, verse 26, I, can somebody say I, I, I therefore so run, not as untartenly, so fight I, not as one beating the air. You will win the prize. Now, please note that the world is a marketplace. And there are two kinds of people you find in the market. Those who go to play and those who go to trade. Those who go to play and those who go to trade. There are players and there are traders in the market. Luke 7, 31 to 32. Jesus talked about those who play in the market. If you play today, you will pay with pain tomorrow. But if you pay with pain today, then you can afford to play tomorrow. So every well-meaning adult is in the marketplace for business business life demands business approach to make the most of it matthew 25 14 to 17 jesus called i mean rather jesus told the parable of a man who called three of his servants and delivered goods to them according to their several abilities and one of them who got five talents went and traded he went and traded those who trade well today will be rewarded well tomorrow he went and traded verse 20 i mean verse 16 17 down the line he went and traded with the same don't beg for more trade with what you have now there are people who are praying for god to give me more give me more give me more no god gave you what to trade with so you can get more when the master returned the one who traded with five came and said master through trading i have got more five he said now add five to it to become ten additions come via trading Please note, there are no born adults. There are only trained adults. The difference between childhood and adulthood is training. And that training is born out of discipline. Discipline. What makes you mature is discipline. Discipline is the linkage between childhood and adulthood discipline is a linkage between immaturity and maturity discipline is a linkage between liability or responsibility only truly disciplined youths will end as distinguished adults without discipline there cannot be distinction. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verses 16 and 17. Woe are thou, O land, when your king is a child, and the prince, thy princes eat in the morning. But blessed are thou, O land, when your king is a son, a son, a child, a son. The linkage is discipline. You don't want to be called a child any longer get discipline to become a son what is discipline discipline simply means operating as demanded not as convenient as demanded life places a demand on every one of us 
So responding to the demand is what we call discipline. Not doing as you like, no. But as is, it is right, you do as it is right, not as you like. Doing right things, that's discipline. Enduring hardness when not convenient. Convenience is a burial place of giants. Inconvenience is a crucible where greatness is born. Make your choice. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Christ. Remember, it is a race. It's a call to so a soldier life. Second Timothy chapter 2 verses 3 all the way to 6. Discipline is essentially about self-control. Self-control. You know, there are two kinds of control. You have imposed control. That is where people make you to do things that you don't like. For instance, you have to be at work at 8 a.m. By force. You are not there, you are queried. But there are those who are disciplined, who are programmed themselves to be at work before 8. Nobody is forcing him. He has disciplined himself. Now, imposed discipline will leave you as a slave. When you have to be told to do what is right at all times, be careful you will end as a slave but when you grow to discipline yourself you will grow to become a king very important so self-discipline is about self-control the ability to say no now one thing that most people lack in this world especially youths is the ability to say no we live in a yes, 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 yes world. Will you drink? Yeah. Will you go out with me? Yeah. <laughs> Will you love me? Yeah. <laughs> now, very few people are able to say no. And if I may tell you the truth, if you don't know how to say no, you will never be known. No. You discover that most distinguished people in life are those who have developed the ability to say no without feeling guilty. Why is it that we don't want to say no? Because you feel you will be offending somebody. If I, if I say no now, how will they feel? If you say yes, how will you yourself feel? Turn the question around. Don't say no to, don't say yes to hurt yourself. After all, the scripture says, love your neighbor as yourself, not that more than yourself. Don't bow to please people and displease yourself. Don't bow to please people to displease yourself. Because when you displease yourself, you displace yourself. In the plan of God for your life. Don't bend. Otherwise you will blend. And lose your identity. Don't bend to what people say. Don't bend to what people feel. Otherwise you'll find yourself blended. And once you blend. You use, lose your identity. Now look at this. We have. Uh, some kitchen equipment called grinder. You put in entities, you put tomato, uh, pepper, and different things in different entity. But once you turn on the blender, it blends everything. You cannot identify which one is tomato and uh, pepper again. It has become common. So when you bend 
you blend and your life of entity will become commonized nobody will know you again stand out as a disciplined person they may mock you for it but they will celebrate you later for it they mocked us now they celebrate us how discipline as i speak to you right now that spirit is released upon you so that self-discipline is being a law to yourself imposed discipline means for you to be under law self-discipline means you are independent you can control yourself you control what to eat you control what you look you control how you sleep you control where you sit down you control who you work with it makes you independent you make a choice of what becomes of you you come out of rulership into independence holding yourself accountable for what happens to your life and destiny self-control self-discipline it's all about self-control. It's possessing a sense of mission in the pursuit of life and refusing to compromise with anything that wants to submerge you. Self-discipline is operating without requiring supervision of anybody. And believe me, that is the only way you can call yourself independent, matured. Furthermore, we can say discipline is bending to rules, not bending the rules. Bending to rules, not bending the rules. Life is guided by rules and regulations, just as you have it in a game. No matter how smart you are as a footballer, if you use your hand to play, foul. Blow the whistle against you. You start all over again. No matter how speedy a vehicle is, if it has no brake, it will end in a crash. You need water in your house. You created a tap in order to control it. Otherwise, water that should be a blessing will become a burden to you. So everything in life, everything in life, you are so anointed, but you are indisciplined. The anointing will kill you. As it kills Samson, it will kill you. I promise you that. <laughs> was so anointed but he didn't control his anger he couldn't see the promised land discipline of the mouth discipline of utterance there are many with due respect who perhaps will have been married but their mouth abuse people anyhow you make a mistake coming here i'm very sorry <laughs> discipline receive grace for it yeah. discipline means living as required not as desired as required not as desired you don't do what you desire you do what is required to be done that's discipline you know there is to everything you desire there is what is required now what are the areas where we need to be disciplined before then let's quickly look at a few examples of a number of people we make reference to today who climbed up 
through self-discipline. Joseph, Genesis 39, verse 9, he was confronted with immorality. You know, it bothers me a lot when I hear young people talk about being confronted with morality. You see, our world is full of immorality. It is not new. You don't have any excuse. It's not new. It's not new. Enticement to immorality is not new. Joseph faced it. But Joseph refused. I tell people, don't infuse. Refuse. That, the, that word is, uh, is, is connected to fuse. Some of you know fuse. Fuse in the light. Fuse in electronics. You put it, it is infused. If it's not there, it is refused. Joseph did not infuse. It's infusion and refusion. He refused. Say, I refuse. I, refuse. I didn't hear you very well. I refuse. refuse drinking. They offer you a drink. Refuse. A number of times when we travel, they ask, uh, will you take some wine? No. Sharp no. No. Amen. <laughs> if you don't answer sharply, they will give you options. No. I said, no, this is a 10% alcoholic. No. Why? I'm a Christian. Don't say I don't like it. I'm a Christian. Amen. A man wants to touch you anyhow as a lady. Maybe he's your boss. No. No. Don't say, excuse me, sir. I don't like that. I don't like that. No. Amen. That's what Joseph did. He refused. The woman laid siege for him. He looked this way, looked that way, no way of escape. Broke the window. It was better for him to be in the prison than to defile his body. Imprisonment is for a while. Defilement of your body is forever. If you are defiled... Except for the help of the Holy Spirit, the memory of it keeps trailing you. You want to pray? Satan said, can you remember last year? <laughs> oh Lord. Oh Lord. Then your tongue begins to dwindle. Because, it, please, there is something Satan has seen in you. He wants to defile it. There is a place God is taking you. Satan wants to defile you. He doesn't want you to get there. He doesn't want you to get there. Don't you hear the scripture says, the adulteress is looking for the precious. For the precious. So he can defy the precious. Satan will not succeed in defiling you. Yeah. We know what happened to Joseph. Chapter 41 of Genesis, he became the prime minister. His mental position was restored we have daniel chapter 1 verse 8 he disciplined himself that he will not defile himself so me i will not defile myself <laughs> let me hear you very well <laughs> and he became the ruler at the end of the day nehemiah disciplined himself chapter 4 verse 23 and he became the governor Discipline. Discipline. In the word of God's servant, Bishop David Oedipo, everyone is absolutely responsible for the outcome of his life. Get back to these areas where you need to discipline yourself. First, you need to discipline yourself in your sleep. Sleep. Sleep is a practice of death. So, if you give yourself to sleep beyond measure, you are dying without knowing. You are dying. Your destiny is dying. 
when you sleep beyond measure. Don't sleep for leisure. Sleep for rest. Now, the human body is made from the ground. So, it's natural for men to want to lie down. Any small thing, I want to lie down. Where he is created from, is calling for him. I want to lie down. So, as a young person, no! I want to stand up. Poverty is the end of sleepers. Sleepers always end as sleepers. On the floor. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber. So shall your poverty come. So, sleep is synonymous to poverty. You can never prosper as a sleeper. Your eyes have to be opened to see opportunities. Life is slippery for sleepers. Now, very simple illustration here. When you are sleepy with your eyes, your hand will come slippery. You see Byro dropping from your hand. That's how life slips out of people's hand who sleep with their eyes. So wake up! Wake up! Opportunities are passing by. Grab it with your hand. Only those whose eyes are open can catch. Now, once your eyes closes, everything in your body becomes docile they raise your hand they carry your leg why the eyes are sleeping the way of sleep the way of sleep and individuals they just woke up at 6 a.m then at 8 a.m he has started dozing he will need a rebooting <laughs> now lift up your hand everybody i cast out the spirit of slumber and sleep from anyone here amen you also need to discipline yourself at work don't be lazy life is always easy for the lazy if it is sunny, he said, I wish this sun is not as high today. If it's cloudy, he said, Ah, I wish today is not as cloudy. I will have gone to work. Always giving an excuse. Ah, go slow is too much today. How will I go to work? Excuses. Share thou a man diligent in his business. You cannot separate discipline from diligence they go hand in glove tell that man he will soon stand before kings and not before me men i thank god i'm so loved by god's servant our father bishop Oedipo, my boss at work but i must tell you one of the reasons why he lost me is because i'm hard working I'm hard working. That's one of the reasons he loves me. No lazy man can survive under that man. So when he's calling for you, it's because you are profitable, you are useful. Some of us wonder, why did they not give me assignment in my place of work? Why they don't like me? They don't like me. They don't like me. Do your work. Everybody will like you. People like workers. They like workers. If you are hardworking, they will call you to everything. Your usefulness is determined by your hardworkness. Permit my grammar, please, if it's not correct. <laughs> Amen. Now, another area you need to discipline yourself is your mouth. Two things about the mouth, eating and talking. Discipline yourself. 
Proverbs 23 verses 1 and 2. This is a counsel. When you sit to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what he said before you. Don't heap a mountain before you. Lose your belt. This is my opportunity. Put a knife in your throat. Don't eat with your ten fingers. If you're a man given to appetite, don't give yourself to appetite because appetite cannot be satisfied. Appetite is only to be controlled. That's where addiction comes in. Lack of discipline. Eating, gullible, drinking without control. Ecclesiastes 6, 7, appetite cannot be satisfied. Tolkien, Proverbs 13, 3. He that keepeth his mouth, keepeth his life. But he that openeth his mouth wide, his lips shall bring to him destruction. A fool says all his heart. But the wise keep it till afterwards. Proverbs 29, 11. Control your mouth. Fools are known by their words. That's what the scripture says. Fools are known by their words. Listen to this. Have you wondered why God gave you one mouth and two ears? You can hear more and speak less. <laughs> hear more. Now, hearing is a mark of wisdom. Proverbs 1 5. A wise man hears and increases in knowledge. Error does not come via hearing, it comes via speaking. Largely. So you live error free when you talk less. Many are very hard working, but their mouth is not disciplined. Every document that passes through his table. Hello? Hello? I'm just reading something in this document now. Ah, then go sack 20 people here. <laughs> and once his mouth is leaking, it will leak out of the system. Control your mouth. Another area of discipline is morals. Morals. This is where many youths have become victims. Moral controls. What do I mean? Abstain from all appearances of evil. First Thessalonians 5.22 Flee immorality. First Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 Flee abstain flee first timothy 6 11 flee flee fornication flee fornication you see it run away from it but thou woman of god flee these things flee drunkenness free using drugs flee smoking listen to me there is nothing you are tempted with today that others were not tempted with. I was tempted with smoking. Among young friends, they just, I mean, young school friends, that you, you just meet them and then they, they ask, won't you try? Yeah, try it. <laughs> They'll tell you to do that. I'm happy you are saying no to it. Nobody was born a smoker. Nobody was born a drunkard. They were introduced to it. <laughs> Discipline yourself. Discipline. Don't forget, you need to develop the ability to say no without feeling guilty. <laughs> Flee. 
Joseph fled. Flee. Let them mock you. Let them ostracize you. Let them call you by different names. But you have escaped. Say loud amen. amen. Flee. Flee fornication. Somebody is sending you a message that is unpleasant. Call the person and say, excuse me, please don't send this kind of message to me again. No. Never again. Amen. You see, if you don't immediately let people know what you don't take, they will push things to your throat. As a student, I, had, I mean, we all have roommates, like many of you do. A young man brought a girl to my room. Before they will start messing up, I say, Stop! In the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody may ask. You see, we have a way of trying to justify our action or reaction. Somebody may say, well, no, 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 what concerns you? Is he not free in the room? He is free to do anything. I am also free to do anything. If I don't do that, maybe next time he's come, he will come with two girls. One for himself and one for you. Because he may think you like it. Amen. <laughs> Flee. Flee. What about your dressing? Exodus 28 2, 2. Dress for glory and for beauty and for holiness. It amazes me today the way a lot of people dress. They want to dress like the people of the world. Now, the reason why the world is influencing us so much is because we are influencing the world so little. We are making them our reference point when they should make us their reference point. What do you have to do as a young lady, for instance, opening your chest, showing your lap? You have no business. You need to sit and ask yourself, what am I gaining from this? Now, put sentiments aside. Ask yourself, there is no serious minded person that appears anyhow in the public. <laughs> now, listen to this even unbelieving prime ministers and governors they dress in such a manner that is decent that attracts commendation. And here you are, a king and a priest, that they cannot differentiate you. Or distinguish you that's why you go to a place they think you are one of the yahoo yahoo boys and carry you along with them now you see carriage determines attraction respect and honor courage courage all school my all through my school days as a young youth nobody ever called me oh boy because I wasn't behaving like oh boy. In my class, they called me pastor. I was not a pastor. I was not ordained. I was just a believer. And they leave me aside. When they are doing evil things, they say, don't do it when Brother David is around. No. Not when Brother David is around. yourself in such a way that people fear God in you. There's a way you dress at work that your boss cannot mess up with you. When you claim to be tempted, perhaps you look temptable by your appearance. You look temptable by your appearance. You look temptable. Dress well, but dress decent. You see us, the way we dress, look at our spiritual father, Look at me here and other ministers. Not necessarily in wearing coats, whether it is native or, but you see decency. 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 Don't dress like the people of the world. 
Don't. 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 Also, discipline yourself where you sit down. Can you be calling unbelievers my best friend? If you say my friend for casual relationship, that's all right. Because you want to win them. You say my best friend. That means your confidant. The one you cannot do without. Haba. One day you will soon start lying the way he's lying. You will soon start drinking the way he's drinking. That will never be your portion. What are we saying as we close? You can think of other areas where you need to discipline yourself. Remember, discipline means doing what is right, not what you like. What is right to be done. It takes self-discipline to be distinguished in the race of life. It takes self-discipline to excel in life. It takes self-discipline to pay extra price for extraordinary accomplishment. Discipline yourself even in your studies. As students, discipline yourself. Define the time to read. The time to relate. The time to be with your friends. Discipline yourself. Discipline yourself. Like Daniel. Like all the other. Including Jesus. He had time to read. And all of that. Well, I see you truly becoming a man and a woman of dominion. God, a big hand, everybody! Woo! <laughs> Amen. Say with me, capita, no. no. May you receive the grace to say no. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. If you can give God another big hand. No assumption. In case somebody is here this morning, you have not given your life to Jesus. It is indiscipline that makes you to say, I will do it later. Indiscipline is procrastination. Procrastination. I'll do it later. I'll do it later. What about uh, this? I'll do it later. You know you are not born again. Don't postpone your salvation again. Today is your day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Or maybe you are born again, but you backslided. Or you are backsliding. Ah, don't slide beyond necessary. Don't backslide. Now, front slide. Front slide. Front slide. Amen. You front slide. We'd like to pray with you right now. Anyone in this condition. Everybody, please rise to your feet. God bless you all. Everybody in this assembly this morning, rise to your feet. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to surrender your life to him. You don't want to pretend again. Remember, you have to stand up. Otherwise, if you bend, you're blending. Don't say, oh, what will people say? How will people feel? Run to the altar here right now. I want to be born again. I want to stop backsliding. If you have your Bible, your bag, whatever you have with you, make sure you bring them along with you. I thought everyone is clapping right now. Come on. Come on. It's quiet ready. I got my mind made up and I will never turn back. I like you to sing that song decisively, deliberately, intentionally. I got my mind made up. I won't turn back till I meet with Jesus someday. Amen. Goodbye, world. <laughs> bye bye to sin. Bye bye to morality. Bye bye to smoking. Bye bye to drinking. Bye bye to hems. Bye bye to weeds. Bye bye. Bye bye to immoral life living. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Come on, sing that song just a few times. My mind made up, and I won't turn back. Cause I want to see my Jesus. Someday I've got my mind. And I won't turn back. I want to see my Jesus.
Amen. Let me congratulate all of you who have come to the altar, either to give your life to Jesus or to rededicate your life to him. I'd like you to lift up your right hand. All of you in front here, please lift up your right hand. If you are writing, stop writing right now. Lift up your right hand. Bow your head to avoid distraction. And say this prayer with me as loud as you can. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. I need your help. I need your forgiveness. Jesus, have mercy on me. Save me today. Give me new life. Give me new beginning. Right now, I believe in my heart. You died for me. On the third day, you rose again. For my justification, I declare now that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. I go from here with power to go and sin no more. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. It's a new day for you. Now, well, please, as you turn, you see some officials guiding you where you will follow them at just a few minutes and you come back before we close please start going back all of us at the altar here god bless you as you turn you see some hands directing you please go with them right now give jesus a big hand everybody out there amen now everyone in the assembly one of the outstanding graces upon this ministry is the grace for discipline how many of you want to receive it right now? Stretch forth your hand. I release upon you now the grace for discipline. You will not live your life in regret in the future. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. Lord, as this convention continues, let grace be multiplied. Give God a big hand, everybody. Rejoice in him. Somebody is lifting up his or her voice, giving glory to God and magnifying him for the visitation. You received anything, lift your hands right now and give thanks to God. Appreciate him to perfect the touch. What a visitation. What a word. What a blessing. Let's thank him. What an impartation. Somebody is giving glory to God. Somebody is celebrating God. Somebody is magnifying God. Pray like one in a revival. Thank him some more. Thank him some more. Get excited. Thank him some more. We can't thank him enough. Rejoice in the word. Magnify the Lord. Celebrate him for his visitation, for his instruction, for his corrections, for the impartation of the morning. Give him thanks. Bless his name. Glorify him. Our Father, we celebrate you. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you.